What's going on everybody, the Network Berg. In this video, we'll be going over some traffic monitoring on a Microtech device. So we'll be looking at some things like an interface monitor. We'll be looking at things like uh, graphing as well as SNMP, how to enable that on a Microtech device. So let's jump into the lecture. All right, we're in Winbox and we're first going to look how to monitor traffic on an interface itself. And this is actually very straightforward to do. I'm just going to zoom in quickly and to see what's actually happening on an interface. In a previous lecture, we did a torch on an interface, which was great to see exactly everything that's like the IP traffic that's going through. But if we just wanna get a good understanding of the amount of traffic passing through an interface, there's a various amounts of ways to look at that. In my interface list, if I just maximize that, I've got my different interfaces. And then we can see there's a different TX and RX tab or column. So the TX stands for transmission, and the RX stands for receiving. <laughs> and this just gives you a breakdown of roughly how much traffic is currently going through the interface, what the interface is sending out and what the interface is receiving from the internet. Now we can get an interface monitor by just double clicking on the interface. And if you scroll all the way to the right hand side, so usually you'll be here on the general, if you go far right, you'll see there's a traffic tab. This will bring up a monitor of that specific interface so that you can see exactly what it's doing. It's almost like a nice little graph that'll show you what's happening with the traffic. It also gives you all of the different types of um, throughput speeds that it can see. So what I might do is I might actually just quickly open up a browser and do a speed test just to show you how cool it is to see in real time what the traffic monitor is doing. So I'm going to run a speed test and you'll you'll see how quickly this stuff spikes up so this this is really cool all right speed test is running and there you can quickly see my traffic's gone up i'm receiving 100 megabits per second almost and um, <laughs> i can definitely see if i'm maybe maxing out my capacity on the link if i maybe have a 100 meg link and now I'm sending, and you can definitely see there's a difference in the colors as well. It clearly shows you what is TX and what is RX so that you know what type of traffic is actually bottlenecking the network at the moment. So this is a basic interface monitor. Um, you also get a different type of tool, but this doesn't really relate to monitoring, but I'll cover this anyways, where you get a traffic monitor. Because Microtech wants you to understand an interface traffic monitor, which was what we just actually showed you. But you get a traffic monitor. It's like a little tool that you can use that will run a script if any interface exceeds a certain amount of bandwidth. So this might be nice if you want to maybe get like an email if um, the interface is hitting it, its, its capacity. So that you can quickly log on. Think of this as an alert just to let you know that something's happening. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, set up a thing and call it beep. And I'm going to run this against my Ether1, which is my WAN interface. I'm going to set this for any received traffic. I'm going to say anything that is above <coughs> received traffic. And there, now you can specify kind of the, the threshold. And I'm going to set this to 10 megabits. So as soon as Ether1 goes above 10 megabits, then it's going to run a script. And here you can do whatever you want with the script. This is a single, think of this like the command line of the Microtech, it will do whatever you tell it here. So just to be um, funny, I might type beep. So if you type beep on a Microtech router board, it will make a little beep sound. So this is obviously not getting an email or anything, but you can script it in such a way to receive mail if the interface goes over its threshold. So I'll just apply that, and I'm going to run my speed test again, and then we're going to see what happens. Speed test is running. And <laughs> did you hear the beep? So that was basically the marketing saying, hey, guess what? Um, you just exceeded your bandwidth. So that is awesome. So that is interface monitor and traffic monitor that we can use to kind of figure out what's happening with our bandwidth. Next on the list, I want to go over graphing. So graphing is a cool little tool that you can use if you don't maybe have your own SNMP server and you want to get like that feel to see what is actually happening with the traffic uh, on your Microtech over a period of time. So graphing allows you to set up graphs that will basically make these peaks and spikes and whatnot to see on which days or, or at which times 
maybe you're using more bandwidth because let's say you've put down this router board at a customer site and it's lunchtime obviously i feel like that that might be when uh, traffic spikes up a bit because a lot of people uh, aren't doing their work and then they start doing other things like video calls and watching videos and whatnot so that's a good indicator to see when that time is so that you can maybe do something proactively about it so to set up graphing you'll also just go to tools you'll go to the graphing and then from the graphing you need to specify your interface rules but before we do that i just want to click on the graphing settings and show you here you can set how often the graph basically takes a snapshot of what's happening on the network. So you can do it every five minutes, every 24 hours, or every hour. I might recommend every five minutes if you want an accurate indicator of what's happening on the network. Otherwise, every hour, I don't feel like that might be a good indicator of what's happening. But let's put it on five minutes, apply that, and then let's add some interfaces. So you can add all the interfaces, or you can add specific ones. I will add all of them. And then you need you can specify an allow address so that only specific subnets or networks can connect to look at the graphing if you don't set that then anybody can connect to it this might be useful if you want to connect to it over the internet to see what's happening with the graphing you should specify store on disk so that it actually stores the graphing information on the hard disk of the microtech so that you can keep track of that and recall that information if your disk is full it's obviously going to cause some issues with the graphing but let's just say you've got a nice clean disk so you can apply the graphing and now it's going to start running one very important thing i need to note if you do want to see the graphing you need to make sure that under your ip services that www is enabled if it's not then you won't be able to access the graphing <coughs> graphing is accessed through normal http so you can just open up a browser and i'll swing it to this screen and then we'll go to my microtix ip uh, so we'll go HTTP 192.168.0.1 and then you can do a forward slash graphs. If you also just connect it to the web fig, like just plainly to HTTP uh, 192.168.0.1, you can see the graphs is there as well as an option that you can just click on. So you can click on that and then you can actually see the graphs. It will just uh, add this um, forward slash graphs for you. Now you can specify which interface you want to see graphs of. So I could go to Ether1. And now this will actually show me graphing of interface one. Currently it's very barren because we haven't actually polled any information yet. It hasn't stored anything. But over the day or over the week, if you come back here, you'll definitely start seeing traffic trends and then you can figure out what to do with that traffic. So that covers graphing. And now the last thing on the list I want to go over quickly is SNMP. So SNMP is also a protocol or an application that we can run with monitoring software like PRTG or SolarWinds or any of those other vendors uh, that you can effectively pull traffic using an SNMP monitor to get information from the microtech. So your SNMP server can connect on SNMP to your device and it can pull, it can pull information from the device. So the, the information isn't stored on the device, it's getting sent to the SNMP server. And this might be stuff like just ping sensors or it might be SNMP traffic so that you can actually see um, what's happening on the interfaces, how much bandwidth the interfaces are using. So this is similar to the graphing as the microtech, but instead of it happening on the microtech, it's happening on an SNMP server. So let's enable SNMP so that a server can effectively connect to it. And to do that, we can go to IP and we can navigate to SNMP. So firstly, you need to enable the SNMP, so you can just click on that. And you can set stuff like the contact info and location. This is not required, but it's kind of best practice. So I might say this is the network Berg, that's who you should contact, and I am in South Africa. Uh, you don't need to specify the engine ID. Things that is very important though is, uh, th this is going to be a public community and here you can specify the trap version so you get version one two or three that you can use that is pretty industry standard right now i think most um, users might see version two or three being used version three just allows for authentication so that you need specific details to log in whereas version two you can just poll directly if you want to so think of version three as the more secure option but if you see two it's really not the end of the world and here you can also specify stuff like the source addresses that is needed to connect. Important, you saw the trap community. I said it is public here, but if you want to create a custom community, you can click on communities 
and then you can click on the plus symbol and think of this community as almost the username <laughs> that a remote site would use to connect on SNMP to start polling information. So this I might call something like TMB and addresses the same just as the source addresses. Here you can specify which addresses can use this account to log in with. Um, and does it have read access? Does it have write access? If you add stuff like write access, um, more advanced SNMP stuff allows actually for remote configuration through SNMP, but we're not going to do any of that. So we can leave it on write access or read access, and I'm not going to add anything else. Actually, I could just apply it as is, or I could set a password as well. One, two, three, four, five, six, and apply that. So now if an SNMP server wants to connect to this microtech, and let me just change my trap community to TMB. It can actually connect using TMB as their username to connect to my microtech to start polling and doing stuff like graphing and interface monitoring and seeing stuff like CPU usage. It's really cool. All right, that wraps up the video. I wanted to just show these monitoring tools off and tips and I'll catch you in the next video. See ya. While we're on the topic of monitoring, I thought it might just be best to also add one thing from the MTCNA that they expect you to know, and that is the profiler tool. So profiler in essence just allows you to see what the CPU or CPUs of the microtech is doing at the moment. So maybe you can see this little block at the top right. It's like a green block that I've got on my microtech. That might show me the CPU usage. So if I add the CPU, just the threshold thingy there, the, the widget, then I can get a number of what the percentage is. But if your CPU keeps getting maxed out, you can actually use the profiler to see what processes is bottlenecking your CPU and causing that bottlenecking to occur so that you can maybe make a plan, stop that process or changing some things on the Microtech. On the smaller Microtechs, you might only have one CPU, but if you start working on bigger devices, they, they do come with multiple cores, especially the cloud core routers. You might even see some with a lot of cores um, that is being used for different processing features. So to access the profile, you can go to tools and you can go to profile and here you can actually select which CPU specifically you want to monitor. You can monitor all of them. And if you hit the start here, it will actually show you exactly what applications or what processes are running on the microtech. And you could see which one of them is using the most of the CPU. So let's say there was maybe some networking protocols being used and this uh, CPU usage was pushed up to 80%, then I'd know there's something happening with the networking that I maybe want to have a look at. Um, yeah, that, that's all that I want to bring up with this profile. It doesn't really get more in depth than this. This just allows you to see what processes are potentially an issue on your system. All right. Thanks for watching and catch you in the next video. Bye.